Unlike the rest of the 550 boat fleet that has to slowly make their way to Newport on the water, the F-27s tool up the I-5 on the morning of the race, rig their boats, and pop them in the water. By Friday morning, Newport is filled to overflowing with the entrance and spectators. By 10.30, everyone, from ancient mariners to multi-hulls, boats racing under IMS, IOR, PHRF, and ORCA, from slugs to this year's center of attention, stars and stripes, everyone is headed for the water. Five hundred and fifty boats in a half square mile area, all headed in totally different directions, is a sight that will give even experienced racers pause. Believe me, if you haven't been there before, it's the most confusing mess on all of this earth. When you're going up to the start line, it's a real zoo. You can't see the committee boats. You'll be doing well to be able to see your land fix points behind you and take a couple of bearings and say, okay, I think we're in the right area for our start. Somehow, in the mass of racers, spectators, distractions, helicopters, and unofficial entrance, the boats do get lined up and start the race. On the windward end, John Walton in Corsair and Dennis Connor in Stars and Stripes sail across the line together. It's obvious which of the boats was getting the attention of the powerboat fraternity. In many ways, the F-27 is ideal for a race like this. Not only is it easy to get to and from the race, but it performs very well both to windward and off the wind, and very well in light airs, as well as when it starts to pipe up. The boat was designed by Ian Ferrier in 1985. Uh, what we tried to achieve with the F-27 was a boat that combined all the advantages of the multi-hole, such as wide beam, the stability, the unsinkability, the excellent handling, with the practical aspects of the conventional boat, such as the monohull, primarily simple marina docking. And uh, with, along with the easy marina docking, you get easy trailability. And uh, there's an even bigger advantage in that you, don't, you can put the boat on the trailer, you can trailer anywhere across the country, greatly increasing your cruising range. Uh, you can save on the dock fees, you don't have to put in the dock. The boat, even though it's a big boat, it's capable of crossing oceans, it's 
across the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. It is light because of our modern construction techniques. There's a light, easy to tow boat and easy to handle boat. So we feel we've come up with what is probably the ideal cruiser. It's light, it's very fast, it's easy to handle, and uh, you can put it away when you're finished with it. Ian makes it sound simple, but it was a highly complicated design challenge to create a boat that would both fold and trailer, be strong and seaworthy, yet light and fast. Ian designed the boat on a computer and also used it to ensure that it's built as it was designed. Can you show us some of your trade secrets? Yeah, sure. This is a Macintosh 2 computer, and on this we virtually designed the whole boat and the, the construction systems of the boat. Starting in the lamination shop, where we laminate all the various parts, every part is laminated according to a schedule such as this one here, which shows the part exactly what goes into it, what layers of cloth or biaxial fabric, and what uh, different reinforcements have to go in. This actually prints out in full colour on a colour printer that we have here. And uh, you're, it goes into a book out on the shop floor. And every different lamination, such as you see here, which is actually unidirectional S-glass, is shown in blue. Or if it's an E-glass, it's shown in red. And this means that, that every single phase of the boat is shown by this computer-generated sheet, eliminating any possibility of error and the, the guy on the shop floor has the exact guide of what he should be doing on every boat. And you have a step-by-step -step instructions down here which show each stage as they should be doing it. It's not difficult to make strong fiberglass boats, just keep slopping the resin into the mold. And that's exactly what many boat builders do, creating boats that are many times heavier and thus much slower than they were designed to be. It takes time to use the techniques invented in the aerospace industry to keep the boat strong but keep weight to a minimum. But the people who build the F-27 also sail the F-27, and they want to go fast. Hence, multi-strata vacuum pressure, the technique which Corsair is alone among production boat builders in using. A technique which not only bonds the core and fiberglass skins together for maximum strength, but also removes all excess weight from the laminate and reduced weight, as the rest of the Ensenada fleet is seeing, to their dismay, means the boats go faster.